what have you been told and what are the plans hoping for a week from Saturday with the bridge? Well, everything we've been told is that it'll be open for game day. Um, I don't know if it's going to be completely finished by the time we kick, but we've been told that at least for a good 24 hour period that people will be able to drive and walk. And so we're hopeful that on game day we're, we're not going to have any problems. I know they've been, they were working 24 7 on it. So uh, hopefully uh, what they've been telling us is true. and. It'll be, it'll be good to go on 10th, on the 10th. What's the reaction been like? You, you were talking about the TV but, and all that for that first game. Yeah, and, yeah. And not, not overwhelmingly positive, I'm sure. But what's it been like? I know it's kind of out of your control. You know, it, it's, it's been hard because I, I get the frustrations. But, you know, like I've been saying, it, it kind of is what it is. I think we've we've tried to do as, as good a job as we can just to make sure our fans know how they can get it. And, you know, worst case scenario is you have it on your phone or your laptop or your iPad or you can probably just – head down to a local restaurant and see the game as well and uh, it was out of our control. If, if we had any control over it, we certainly would have tried to change it and you know, we want to make sure our fans are able to see it. It's not very often that they don't get to watch the Broncos on television. Coach so. Harson said it's on DirecTV. I, yeah, that, that's news to me. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, I, I don't think that's true. I think what he probably meant is there's a way to get it on your television and uh, we just made an announcement today that you can go to our website and it's got you know five or six different steps you guys have all probably been through it so frustrating but uh hopefully they'll still tune in season ticket sales how are those going where are those numbers at? we are about 93 percent of our goal so uh i think we're right around 19.5 19.6 at this point we've still got you know 10 days or so we got our outside sales team and everyone in our ticket office pushing it and selling mini plans. I think today was the first day that individual games were opened up to the general public. And I'm not going to lie, we're, we're a little behind, but uh, we're not giving up. And hopefully the uh, excitement of this year and the first game against Wazoo uh, on the 10th will continue to generate sales and we can get there as close as we can. Pretty impressive home slate when you look at it. The team's coming yeah. in here. Do you think it's just the late starts? Or why, why do you think it is down this year? I think that has something to do with it, no doubt. Uh, you know, a lot of new guys, too. I think Bronco Nation, because they're so passionate, you know, they want to know exactly how we're going to be. So there's probably a few questions out there about that. But I've seen this team practice this summer and this fall, and uh, we're good. And I'm really excited to see them get out and play. And, you know, there's nothing like watching a game in Albertson Stadium on game day, and I, I just hope they come out and support our team. Curious about the uh, success of the mini plans. This is kind of the first time that you guys have done those. Yeah. How, how's it going? How's well, you know, back to the, the, late, the late start question, uh, we just felt like we had to try and do some different things to at least give fans the option to come out. You know, maybe it's either not affordable or they don't want to come late at night. So we tried to, in a way, separate what we thought were the attractive games and try to put two packages together. And I don't think one has maybe sold much more than the other one, but we've had real success with it. So I think it's a little bit more affordable for people and they can pick and choose some of the games instead of committing to all of them. And, you know, we certainly want people buying our season tickets. There's no doubt about that. But the next best thing, we want to offer options. And we want to make the purchase of a ticket easy for our fans. And I think that the, the mini plans have helped. The, the, the Big 12, I mean, what's the latest on that? Have you guys made a presentation yet or is that upcoming? We, yeah, we have not. Uh, we, we've not been contacted to do that. You know, as you guys probably know, uh, there's not much I can say about that. You, you know as much as I do. Um, and we're just probably in waiting mode right now. But really, our focus is just trying to do what we got to do here. And, you know, we're just honored to be in the conversation. And if there's a time where we've got to make a presentation, we'll do it. So not even the video one or whatever. You haven't done anything. No. How's it gone with you and you and uh, Dr. Custer, just from, from your side, your conversations, your plan, yeah. kind of behind the scenes, just from your end? How's it gone? You know, it's been fun, tough? You know, what's the, kind of the process been like? It's been great. Uh, you know, I work for someone who's passionate about this place and supports what we're trying to do. And, you know, when you're sitting in my seat, that's one of the most important things is having leadership on campus that believes in what athletics is doing. And I, I've... I've been pleased since I came to work for him, and it's been great. And he's been very supportive of not only just me, but our coaches and our staff. And you know, he wants us to be great, and, and uh, we share that in common. And um, he's the first one to call me when he thinks something's wrong, and, and I appreciate that because he cares about what we're doing. So, so far, it's it's been terrific. Really enjoyed working with him. The possibility of the Big 12 excites a lot of people. One of the more exciting things is the idea of possibly expanding the stadium. Is that something that's even in conversation without expanding to the Big 12? 
It always has been. Uh, you know, we talked about this two or three or four years ago. I can't even remember exactly when it was. And at that time, if you remember, we were actually thinking about lowering the field. And that's where that whole schematic kind of came together. Uh, for us, when you're expanding your stadium, it's important that if you can do it and give yourself the opportunity to actually generate revenue. You know, I'll give you an example. The, the football center is as nice as they're in, in the country, but there's really no way to you know, sell a ticket to it. So we've got to, we've got to find ways to expand our stadium in a way that that fits what we can do here and set it up um, with the opportunity to hopefully have some revenue coming in to help pay for it. But uh, the conversation has always had uh, about expanding the stadium and. You know, if need be in the future, maybe that comes sooner than later, then we'll address it at that the point. The pictures everybody saw kind of freaked out or got excited. I mean, is that that's yeah. not the actual plan, is it? Or is there an actual secret it's a, plan somewhere? It's a schematic, <laughs> okay. the secret plan. Uh, <laughs> not really. I, you know, we'll if we ever get to that point, we'll go back and, and look at what's really right for our stadium and how many seats we want to actually add. I think I've I've mentioned this before. You know, you, you got to be careful there when you're adding seats. You want it. You want it full. You know, Stanford's a great example. Some years back when they redid it, they took away 15 or 20,000 seats or, or something like that. I don't know the exact number, but, and now they're they're full and you can't get a ticket. And I, I'd much rather see it that way. So I think we just have to be smart about moving forward. And, um, we don't have a final design or a final schematic. We have a bunch of ideas and a bunch of drawings. We just happen to use that one because it, it showed not maximum capacity, but pretty close to it. In fact, I think you guys were mentioned 53,000 or something in the past. We, we can get there if we need to, but I think you gotta be smart about that. You gotta make the experience for the fans a good one, so you take all those things into consideration. I'm curious, uh, did, you guys, did you guys have to tell the Mountain West that you were gonna put together that proposal or packet for the Big 12? And on top of that, how do you kind of create that, uh, or achieve that balance where you're obviously maybe interested in pursuing the Big 12, but, uh, still upholding you well I think you have conversations with them you know Craig Thompson understands the opportunities that that come about not just for Boise State and and uh, you know I've always said this about just expansion in general I, I want what's best for Boise State and we're like I said we're, we're honored to be in the conversation and uh, you know for now We'll, we'll see how it goes. Our focus is, <laughs> is getting ready for Mountain West competition. Yeah, that's the conference we're in, and we're going to do what we got to do to be successful there. So, But I think he understands opportunities for schools, and if it fits your university and you actually get an invite and you have the chance to say yes or no or, or consider something like that, then, then that's uh, it's great to be a part of that conversation. I, I, so, know, I know some of the Big 12 questions are hard to answer, but... Um, would, would you split the football and Olympic teams up? Is, is, that, is, is there a scenario where that could be a potential uh, you know, scenario, or is it one or, or all or none? Or? We haven't gotten that far yet. So. A sport that was brought up before the Big 12 came even came into play was baseball. Yeah. We've heard some rumors about it. Any update on any future for Boise State baseball? Not really right now. It's not off the table, but there's some other challenges that we've got to take care of before we go down that road. And uh, I still think having baseball at Boise State would be great, but I think you've got to find ways to have it and pay for it and make sure that it fits within your department going forward. And uh, it's not off the table, but it's it's not at the top of the list right now. Are you kicking around adding any other sports? I mean, whether it be at baseball or anything else, is that even is that something that that's a possibility, or are you are you set? Not right now? now, but you know, there's been all kinds of talk in the past about lacrosse and mm -hmm. men's swimming and baseball and. Uh, field hockey and I think we even talked about bowling a few years back. It was starting to grow in the NCAA, sorry, but uh, uh, not, not at this point. With the game down there Saturday, um, how, how much have you been talking to them about the weather and stuff? I know some more rain yeah. could be coming maybe uh, this week. Later this week I actually but. talked to, or Scott and I shared some uh, messages earlier today and his, yeah. his call was basically just saying, hey, we're really looking forward to having you. And I don't think it's really affected their field or their, their campus as much. Some of their employees have been affected by it. so. You, know, you, you feel bad for those people, um, but I think for now the the game is ready to go. And like I said, the conversation I had with him earlier today was more about just welcoming Boise State and making sure we have what we need. And so it was, it was terrific. The, the condition of the game really didn't come up. So.